on a mass scale? No. Because you're going to have people that are going to do it. And I respect your opinion so much, but that's, it sounds so crazy because war in America is a class issue. And when I was there, it's poor white people, it's poor Mexican people, it's poor black people who go over and surrender their bodies to make sure that everyone in America can continue to do what they're doing. Hey man, being, on, being on their phones and enjoying the luxuries of freedom. I feel you. But men are dying for freedom. Right. If you ask me, I, everybody should go back to wherever they came. Right? <laughs> seriously, seriously. Wouldn't what, what you think that'll, that'll solve a lot of stuff? If you can articulate a way to make that possible, I, w- I would listen to it and entertain it. Yeah, because it's no way possible because there's a lot of people on Earth. Everyone, everyone <laughs> who's here, their mm-hmm. ancestors came here because where they came from, they didn't like it that much. Everybody who's in this place called America, they're here because the place they came from, they didn't like it that much. Right. And anybody who's here right now, if you don't like this place... Please take your ass back to where your ancestors came from and then send me a postcard and tell me if you like it over there. Well, I mean, everything is all fucked up now, so hey. So like I can't I can't I can't time travel. I can't go back to the time when my people was kings and queens. I can't do it. I can only exist right now in the most powerful nation that's ever existed in the history of the world, the United States of America. You are the greatest American alive, <laughs> mother the one of the, the greatest citizens to ever exist. And I say that because I'm doubling down. We have to be thankful. We have to appreciate what we have. And not only do we have to be appreciate what we have, we have to be good stewards to what we have. No, I'm not saying that um, living on a day-by-day basis. Yes, we do have to survive as human beings. You know what I mean? And if money... Rhetoric matters, bro. I'm not here to survive. I'm here to thrive. I'm in the most richest place that's ever existed. Yes. I, w- I want... I want everyone who's here with me, bro, this is a class war. This is a class war. One of my, my most favorite people in history, Fred Hampton, understood that we need we need the white KKK boys who are making less than $40,000 a year to, once they leave their welding job, to come over here and have a conversation about how we advance the male position in America. Mm. The, the, there is a war against masculinity. At, on top of that, there is a class war. So you're doubling down on poor men. They got that. They just tr- they squeezing the life out of poor men in America. And we have to have that conversation because that's the here and the right now. Who's squeezing the life? Who is these people that squeezing the life? Legislation, With- Congress people, politicians, rhetoric, uh, institutions. On both sides? Yes. So, I mean, damn, it's on both sides. So what can we Troy, do about you it? You never heard happy wife, happy life? Yeah, I say, uh, I like to say um, happy man, happy land. I mean, that, that sounds <laughs> cool, but like we have men, men, men are submissive to their women in this society right now. Well, yeah. When, when a woman says, uh, I, I want to do this. Yes, dear. It's a whole lot of that, bro. I'm just like, this is, this is a reality that men are facing right now. And I'm attacking that thing. Right. I mean, because it's, it's probably... A, a lot of men is afraid to be on their own. It's not. I don't even think that it's fear. Through legislation, uh, physicality has been completely removed from any equation. And so what used to be a privilege and a courtesy, well, where it, what's called chivalry, you look at me and you know that I have strength. And so you ask me, can you open this pickle jar? Because you know that my grip strength is stronger than your grip strength. And now you say we're equal and I'm, but now we're equal, but you're still going to tell me to open the jar because you still ain't got the grip strength to open the jar. So you expect me to do it without any appreciation for the fact that I'm doing it. So don't open the fucking pickle jar. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What, I, what I'm saying is like, the messaging and the branding has right. to be what it is. Like, this is a courtesy. Me rendering my physical strength to a nation is a courtesy. Me rendering my physical strength to a counterpart is a courtesy. When I fall in love with the woman, I'm saying that I'm willing to fight for and die, surrender my entire being to make sure that you and my offspring are able to continue. This is the contract that I have not only with my woman, but with my community and my nation. This is masculinity, man. It's about making babies and protecting your babies, and that's it. I agree with protecting your nation of people. 